In this video, we're going to look at uh, power factor correction. We're going to consider uh, a circuit that has an inductor and a resistor. So if we can effectively think of this as a motor, where um, this is the inductance of uh, the coil and the motor, and this is the resistance associated with that inductance. Uh, what we are eventually going to do then is put some capacitors uh, in parallel across this uh, to increase the, the efficiency of the motor. So let's consider um, this part of the circuit first. So the coil has a reactance, which is 2 pi FL. So in this case, the frequency of the signal is 400 hertz, as it is in an aircraft, and the inductance was uh, 10 millihenries. So now the reactance of the coil is 25.1 ohms. The total impedance of that branch then is uh, the resistance by the reactance squared. That should be the resistance squared by the reactance squared. So the resistor was 33 and this is 25. That gives an impedance of 45, 41.5 ohms. The current is just Ohm's law. is the supply voltage, which was 115 volts, divided by our uh, value of Z here. That gives me 2.8 amps. The phase angle between the voltage and the current, that's got from the formula cosine phi is equal to R over Z. So therefore phi is the inverse cos of R over Z. And putting the value of 33 ohms for the resistor and 41.5 for Z here, that gives me a phase angle of 37.3 degrees. The power uh, consumed by the circuit, and then in an AC circuit, the true power is VI cosine phi. So that's 115 volts by the 2.8 amps, which we got from here, by the cosine of 37.3, and that gives me 256 watts. So here I have a nice simulation of the uh, circuit. All the switches are open, and I'm getting 2.75 amps total current, uh, which is 2.75 amps approximately here coming down to that branch. So when we looked at the calculation, it was 2.8 amps. So we're approximately uh, right. There's our calculation of 2.8 amps. OK, so now let's put a capacitor in parallel. So I'm going to put a 1 microfarad capacitor uh, in parallel with uh, the winding and the, the resistor. Well, these calculations don't change, so the XL is still 21.5 or 25.1 Z is still 41.5 and we still have 2.8 amps running in that branch of the circuit. In the capacitive branch, well the capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi FC. So if I put the values in for 1 microfarad, I get that the capacitive reactance is 397 ohms. The current then in that branch of the circuit is 115 volts over to 397, which gives me 0.28 of an amp. So if I drew a phase diagram, uh, in green here is my 2.8 amps from the inductive circuit. And here's my 0.28 of an amp through the capacitive circuit. Now, if I want to get that value there, I know that that angle is 37.3. So this value, let's call it YL. YL is 2.8, which is the current here, this current, uh, times the sine of 37.3, which is uh, 1.69 amps. We now want to calculate this value uh, on the blue line up here for the total current. And that is equal to 1.69, which was the green value, plus this 0.28 in red here. That gives me uh, a value of 2.22 uh, amps. So, <coughs> sorry, I got that wrong. 1.69 minus 0.28 is 1.41 amps. The x value co component of the current, of this total current here now in blue, it's shown in purple there, is 2.8 times the cos of 37.3, which is 2.2. So the total current using um, Pythagoras' theorem, so we have 2.2 here and 1.41 here, gives me 2.62 amps. OK, 
Okay, so if I close this switch here on my simulation, and I'm getting 2.6 amps total current, which is what we expected. And there's our uh, 200 odd milliamps coming down in that circuit. So we're still okay. If I want to calculate the phase angle then, well the phase angle is uh, the inverse cause of uh, the adjacent which was 2.2 over the hypotenuse which is 2.6 and that works out to be 32 uh, degrees. The power now is 254 watts. Let's change the capacitor value so uh, I'll put in the 6.8 microfarad capacitor instead. All those calculations are the same for the inductive side. Capacitive side, we just change the value C, so XC now becomes 68.6, and the capacitive current comes 1.68 amps. Drawing that on a phasor diagram, there's my 2.8 amps from the inductive circuit here. Here's my 1.68 amps from the capacitive circuit. Right, I know this value is 2.8, I know this value here is 37.3, so if I want to get what, what I'm calling YL here, it's 2.8 times the sine of 37.3, which is 1.69. So I had 1.69 here, and I've effectively 1.69 there. 1.69 minus 1.69-ish is equal to zero. Okay, so the total current has no Y component. It's all X component. Okay, so the current is in phase with the voltage. And that current value is 2.8 times the sine, or cos of 37.3, which is 2.2 amps. And let's look at that on the simulation. Okay, so if I close the switch, I'm down to roughly 2.2 uh, 2 amps. And I've just noticed that my capacitor value is 5.8 here and a 6.8 in the calculation. So that might be uh, what's causing the slight difference. Okay, but I hope you get the point. We, we've, we've reduced the total current down to about 2.2 uh, amps. Okay, so total current is roughly 2.2 .2 amps, and I have a phase angle of uh, zero degrees. Uh, my power now is 253 watts, so that's the maximum amount of power we've had so far. Finally, if I go one further and increase the capacitance uh, to 10 microfarads, then what's going to happen? Well, once again, the inductive side of the circuit remains unchanged. The capacitive side, uh, we just changed the capacitor to uh, the 10 microfarads. Gives me a capacitive reactance of 39.7 ohms and a current in the capacitive circuit of 2.89 amps. So if I draw the phaser, um, there's my 2.89 amps due to the capacitor. Here's my 2.8 amps uh, due to the inductor. If I want to get that component, I know that it's 1.69, so it's 2.8 times sine of 37.3, which is 1.69. This component is my 2.89 here minus this component, which is 1.69, so 2.8 minus 1.69 gives me 1.2. The horizontal component, well, that x1, if you like, is equal to 2.8, so 
2.8 times the cos of 37.3 gives me this, which is 2.22. So my total current then from Pythagoras' theorem is my 2.22 squared plus uh, the square of 1.2, and then you get the square root of all that, giving me my total current, which is 2.5 amps. And we can check on the simulation, see if that's correct. Uh, if we want to calculate the phase angle, well, I know that uh, this is 2.5, so that's the hypotenuse. The adjacent here is 2.2, so we get the uh, inverse cos of that, which gives me 28 degrees. So uh, what we've seen really is by varying the capacitor value, we had a total current that was started off somewhere here, and then we brought it up to zero, and as we increased uh, the capacitor value, it went uh, this way. So you can see by choosing the right capacitor value, um, you can uh, maximize the amount of power. Because the power here is uh, 253 watts. Okay, so the maximum amount of power is when the voltage and current are in phase with each other. And that concludes the presentation, and I hope it's okay.